back in a second. Hello, good morning. Hi, I'll kick off. Just on the question of Viktor Orban and the money for Hungary, I mean, Ireland being a net contributor to the mm -hmm. EU, do you agree that 10 billion should have been granted to Hungary without any real. Uh, Yes, yeah, so, so I, I actually discussed this this morning with President von der Leyen and also with uh, Commissioner Hahn, um, and the rules are the rules. Uh, Hungary is entitled to certain monies, um, and they're linked to certain rules, and if they fulfil the criteria, um, the money flows. And we're uh, a country that always talks to other countries about the importance of upholding the, the rule of law, and in this case, it's the European Union that had to obey its own rules. Um, the timing is not good, because of course the perception is, is that this is some sort of um, incentive uh, to Hung Hungary to support certain positions uh, and incentive that mightn't even work but that's actually not the case uh, the rules are the rules uh, Hungary fulfilled the criteria required uh, to unlock this aspect uh, of the 30 billion uh, and that's why it's been allocated but Hungary still has the potential to veto uh, the session talks How damaging would that be? Well, I, I, I've been attending European Council meetings for six or seven years now. Um, this is probably one of the most important ones that I've attended, precisely because of the big decisions we have to make in relation to Ukraine, uh, a financial decision and also a decision on whether to begin negotiations. And we have to say yes to at least one of those two and ideally both of those two, um, because Ukraine is in peril. Um, uh, Ukraine will not stand without support and ongoing support from both the European Union and the US, the two towers of freedom and democracy in the world. And if Ukraine doesn't have support from the EU and the US, uh, well, then Putin will win and all of the consequences that flow for the world after that. So that's why this meeting is so important. Uh, we must come away here uh, with the financial package for Ukraine that is sustainable, that gives them the assurance uh, that they will be funded for the next few years if needs be and sends that very clear message to the Kremlin as well. Uh, and then also um, I'll be very strongly supporting the opening of negotiations. It might take many years for Ukraine to join the European Union, but we should begin negotiations next year. And I know from speaking to President Zelensky that matters on the front line, uh, soldiers who have been fighting on the front line for Europe, for Ukraine. This will really count in terms of their morale. So uh, this is a really important meeting. Well, but take Shona first, that's okay. But we'll be pushing for, for strong wording on Gaza coming out of the summit, uh, certainly stronger wording than was in place in October. Um, I think the position of European countries has been evolving. Uh, at the UN the other day, uh, Ireland was in the majority of EU countries, uh, 17 uh, voting for a ceasefire, only two voting against. So I think the centre of gravity within the European Union is moving closer to the position that Ireland has taken for some time, um, but still needs to move further, in my view. Um, what I'll be saying to European leaders here is that I think uh, the European Union has lost credibility because of uh, our inability to take a stronger and more united position uh, on Israel and Palestine. Uh, we've lost credibility with the global south, which actually is most of the world, uh, because what is perceived to be double standards, um, and there's some truth in that, quite frankly. Uh, and secondly, I think there is a major issue uh, with young people um, and credibility uh, that the European Union has among young people. We know how strongly young people feel about climate. Um, they also feel really strongly about the issue of Israel-Palestine. Uh, the majority of voters under 40 in the US, as well as the EU, now, now having more sympathy with Palestinians than with Israelis. That's a significant change, and uh, European leaders need to be wise to that. Uh, and that's why I think we need to strong wording that condemns terrorism uh, perpetrated by Hamas, uh, but also uh, calls for humanitarian ceasefire and calls for justice for Palestinian people, which is a two-state solution which the European Union uh, should be pushing uh, and demanding, not just calling for it. So um, uh, 
on our housing targets, I can absolutely guarantee that we will meet the overall housing target. In fact, we'll exceed it. Uh, so we'll build um, more than 30,000 new homes this year, and that's the highest in uh, well over a decade. Um, what I can say for certain is whether we'll meet every sub-target within that, social, affordable, uh, private, cost rental, etc. I can't guarantee that. Um, what I can say is that we'll build uh, more than 30,000 new houses this year, more than well over a decade, uh, and that we do expect uh, new social housing output uh, to exceed last year. So that'll be certainly the highest since 1975. Yeah, I, I, on, on the broader economic picture, um, I think the report that we saw from the SRI yesterday um, tells a very important story. Uh, the Irish economy is slowing down. Uh, that is very evident. Uh, after the pandemic restrictions were lifted, the economy took off like a rocket. It grew very fast. Uh, that is now changing because of domestic and international factors. Uh, our economy is now slowing down. Uh, it is strong. Um, but in my view, that, cons that, that confirms that the government has made the right policy decisions. Um, a lot of people six months ago, a year ago, we were talking about the economy overheating. Nobody's talking about that now. Uh, very recently, uh, some people were talking about the government fueling inflation. In fact, inflation is coming down. It's going to be uh, between 2 and 3% uh, next year, in my view. Uh, and that means that we are at the peak of the interest rates rate cycle, in my view. I think we'll start to see interest rates fall next year, which will be very welcome for um, borrowers and mortgage holders in particular. But also, we should stick with the budget strategy, uh, because the economy isn't overheating. It's slowing down, so the budget package makes sense, and we'll stick with that. Uh, and if anything, what we're going to need to do next year is to ramp up capital investment uh, to make sure that we have uh, investment in the economy and create the further capacity for future growth. Okay, thanks a lot. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Just one question. About the situation in Gaza, we heard in your letter that you Yeah, well, Ireland is calling for a ceasefire, and uh, you'll have seen at the UN the other day 17 out of 27 member states here in the European Union uh, now calling for a ceasefire, uh, leading to a new peace process and Palestinian statehood, which is the only way uh, to secure uh, justice and security for everyone living uh, in the region. Uh, one of the difficulties we have as a European Union is that uh, foreign policy decisions are made by uh, are made by unanimity, made by consensus, and while sometimes that suits us, other times it doesn't, and that is a, a real difficulty. So we'll have to try to agree wording that uh, all 27 seven member states can sign up to. That's not going to be an easy task. Um, but I think at the very least we need stronger wording than we had back in October. Um, as I said before, uh, I'm a huge believer in the European Union. I think the European Union has been an enormous success. It's a beacon uh, for prosperity and freedom around the world. Uh, but our inability to take a uh, stronger and clearer position uh, on the situation in Gaza, uh, I think has undermined our credibility with the global south, with the Arab world, with Africa, with Asia, Latin America. Uh, and also, I think uh, there's a real strength of movement from young people uh, in the United States, uh, in the EU, uh, around the world, who feel a very strong sympathy for uh, Palestinians um, uh, and, uh, and what they're suffering in Gaza at the moment. Uh, so I think very crucial that we make it clear once again that we've no truck or tolerance for terrorism. Uh, what Hamas did on October 7th had no justification. There was no excuse for it. Um, what should happen now is a lasting ceasefire in Gaza. And then we need to move on to the most important thing, which is um, talks about the future and the final status. Uh, and that really means um, a two-state solution. And the European Union needs to not just call for that, needs to actually work towards it and put pressure on, on both sides to make that happen. So, thank you. Well, look, that's, that, that's, that's not going to happen. Uh, and this is going to be a difficult meeting. It's going to um, take a while. Uh, so uh, make sure you've, you, you, you're prepared to be here Saturday or Sunday if needs be. Um, but that's not going to happen. Um, but there is a question here, and it's a legitimate question. Uh, so many big decisions at European level have to be made by consensus, by unanimity, all 27 member states. As the European Union grows, as we take in more member states, uh, is that going to be viable down the line forever? But at the same time, are we as Ireland willing to give up our veto on issues that it might suit us on? So we need to see that 
from both sides of it. I, I believe we need reform of, of the way the European Union works, um, but we also need to be understanding of the fact um, that uh, if we move away from unanimity to majority voting, uh, we will be on the, on the losing side of some votes. And are we yet comfortable with that? And we just need to be aware of that paradigm. So, thank you. Do you mean the, the US or, or the EU? The US, yes. If they well, fail to approve. Well, look, I, I think the most important thing that we need to decide here, here today and this weekend uh, is that uh, long-term financial support for Ukraine will be coming from the European Union. Um, I don't think it's for us to tell the Americans uh, to support Ukraine unless we as Europeans are willing to support Ukraine. Ukraine is a European country, uh, and I think that really has to be the outcome of this meeting uh, be, because... Um, um, if, if you think about it, the US, the EU, these are the two towers of freedom and democracy in the world. Uh, if we can't support Ukraine throughout 2024, uh, Putin will win. Uh, and I can't even begin to contemplate the consequences for the world, for all of us, uh, if that were to happen. So this is a really important meeting and a really big decision to be made. Well, I, I, I believe um, Prime Minister Netanyahu is wrong in that assessment. Um, what matters uh, is the opinion of the international community, uh, the view of the United States, and I'm, I'm encouraged by some of the remarks by President Biden in recent weeks, but also public opinion in Israel, which is um, not so supportive as of Prime Minister Netanyahu at the moment. So um, uh, certainly what, what I'll be pushing for very strongly here is language from the European Union that condemns terrorism and the actions of Hamas unequivocally calls for a ceasefire so that we can relieve the enormous suffering of the Palestinian people, but also puts Europe very firmly behind a two-state solution. Uh, things have changed. Um, there has to be a, a major peace initiative um, leading to a two-state solution, and Europe needs to be behind that um, and put pressure and also encouragement uh, on Israel and Palestine to make that happen. Apart from encouragement, what can Europe do? Well, I, I, look, I think there are a number of things we can do. Um, we can continue to increase our humanitarian support for Palestine, and we are doing that. That's been uh, more than trebled. Very important that money flows. Uh, another thing we can do, and Ireland is uh, among the countries uh, saying this should happen, is to begin to put uh, travel bans and um, sanctions on uh, not just on, on the funders of Hamas, but also on Israeli settlers involved in violence against Palestinians in the West Bank. Uh, over 250 Palestinians killed in the West Bank in the last two months, not an area controlled by Gaza, uh, and that action is uh, being perpetrated by violent Israeli settlers who are trying to push Palestinians off their land. Uh, that's one of the things we can do, and also try to have a more united voice at a UN level as well. So I have to go. Thank you.